My immediate reaction to the Elijah Moore trade from the New York Jets to the Cleveland Browns is emblematic of a mindset shift that needs to take place in this fan base, myself included. Elijah Moore, what a young stud. I can't believe we let him go for next to nothing. Uh, No. Elijah Moore is a receiver who, after being in the league for, I don't know, about five seconds, requests a trade during the team's longest win streak in six seasons, makes it about him. I don't want to be here. Guess what? Goodbye. Goodbye. Have you ever heard in NFL history of a wide receiver requesting a trade after 18 games in the NFL when they were highly targeted their first season, but then the team actually finds a way to win and they're not as part of the game plan as they want to, or the quarterback isn't as good as they hoped and they request a trade, but Buffalo, it's a business. Don't you know? Elijah Moore's looking out for his business interest. Well, that's interesting because if Elijah Moore could have been patient for more than five seconds or been selfless more than five seconds in this league, he could have been catching Canton bound footballs. Yeah. You know, what's good for business catching footballs out of the right arm of Aaron Rodgers, one of the top five throwers of the football in NFL history. That would have been good for business. Now Elijah Moore can catch footballs covered in massage oil and hope that Deshaun Watson, after looking like a bottom five quarterback in the NFL last year, regains his 2019 form, not holding my breath on that. Good luck. You know what else is good for business? What Garrett Wilson decided to do. Ball out regardless. Ball out regardless of the quarterback play. So now on Garrett Wilson's resume, it says offensive rookie of the year with no quarterback. And on Elijah Morris, it says five foot nine malcontent who is pretty talented. Who made the better business decision last year, Garrett Wilson or Elijah Moore? You tell me. And it's not just Elijah Moore's fault. It's Mike LaFleur's fault. Well, yeah, guess what? He's gone too. Oh, Mike LaFleur, he was the scapegoat for Zach Wilson. Please, Mike LaFleur couldn't call your local Applebee's to make a reservation for 6 p.m. tonight, let alone an NFL offense. Mike LaFleur's offense didn't score a touchdown the last 13 quarters of the season. It gets worse. The last nine quarters of the season, a pass from a Jets quarterback did not travel into the end zone, caught or otherwise. A target was not thrown into the end zone. Disgusting. Remember when (laughs) Mike LaFleur's offense was so complicated, Garrett Wilson couldn't even play. The offensive rookie of the year couldn't even play week one. We had to play Lawrence Cager in a 17 tight end set like with the 1946 Chicago Bears and the offensive rookie of the year is on the sideline because he couldn't learn all of the intricacies of Mike LaFleur's brilliant offense. You know what's weird? Uh, in the, one of the biggest embarrassments of the season, Thursday Night Football against the Jacksonville Jaguars, Doug Peterson had four days to prepare and he figured out Mike LaFleur's offense like that. But Garrett Wilson, the most talented offensive rookie of the class, couldn't learn it in a whole summer. Spare me. Goodbye, Elijah Moore. Goodbye, Mike LaFleur. And Zach Wilson. No, he's not off the hook either. Oh, well, Mike LaFleur led Zach Wilson down the offensive line. He should have got a third year. Enough. Enough. The tape that Zach Wilson put out there in 2022 could be shown in interrogation rooms. Abhorrent. Vile. Disgusting. Good kid. Wish him all the best. Made more money in the first two years of his career than I'll ever make in my life. Will always crush it with the ladies, but is it time to be serious? It is time to separate what it means to support the team and be a real fan and have eyeballs and raise the standard of what it means to be a New York Jet, which means you do your job well and you want to do it here. And if you cannot do those things, goodbye. Goodbye, Elijah Moore. Goodbye, Michael LaFleur. Enjoy a perpetual reset Zachary Wilson, and furthermore, more players on this team. Brees Hall and Michael Carter don't like the fact that we might bring in some other running backs, namely Ezekiel Elliott. Look, we need to understand that this Jets team is now going to be in the market for mercenaries, hired guns to come here and chase a ring. Not big names that we've gotten burned with in the past by giving massive contracts to Le'Veon Bell, expecting him to save our entire offense, Tremaine Johnson be a cornerstone of our defense. No, short-term deals for veterans not paying a Jets tax who want to come here to chase a ring. You cannot be afraid to get better. And if you're a New York Jet player here, you cannot be afraid to compete. If you think Ezekiel Elliott is washed and we bring him into training camp, even though his stats last year would have led the Jets in rushing yards and touchdowns pretty much the entirety of the last decade besides one year of Chris Ivory, okay, well then beat him out. Beat him out. Who can, oh, we don't need him. We have Ty Johnson. Who's going to set a certified letter to Ty Johnson's mother letting him know that we signed Ezekiel Elliott and his roster spot is not guaranteed? Boo who? You cannot be afraid to compete and you cannot be afraid to add depth and complementary skill sets to this roster. I love Michael Carter, but if Michael Carter could pick up blitzes and block linebackers coming after his quarterback as well as he blocked me on Twitter, wouldn't even be entertaining Ezekiel Elliott. Cannot be afraid to upgrade. Last, oh, Bryce Hall, cornerback one. 
We don't need sauce. Gar <laughs> it's poverty mindset. It is poverty mindset. If you can't do your job well, you don't want to do it here or you do it pretty well, but we're going to add supplementary pieces and depth players to actually do the thing of being a serious team and trying to win it all. And if you're a good player, we're always going to be on the lookout to replace you with greatness. That is what serious teams do. And we need to understand that now we're trying to be a serious team. We got to get used to it. Go Jets.